Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Hope you're having a great Monday. We're going to try and make it better for you tonight. We have a show full of the latest hot topics everyone's talking about. And then later on, of course, we have our movie reviews. And then find out what, what uh, Black-owned business we're highlighting tonight in our Black-owned business spotlight. But this is our season 14 kickoff. I can't believe it's been 14 seasons. Lania, Chike, hot topics, hold it down. First of all, let me start with you all. Listen, all right. Let's do y'all have a toast. We can do a little toast. Yeah. This is the season 14. On this day, January 22nd. This is to y'all. Thank you. This is a mocktail because I'm doing dry January, but whatever. <laughs> but listen, if you, I want to mind you all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course our official website is Stephen Show.com. Also check us out on TikTok. If you'd rather watch us, go on our YouTube channel, the Stephen Knight Show. You can also check out our merch at our website. And make sure you're registering to vote. That's very important. I want to shout out my brother, my big brother. He's been a, a guest panelist on here. Lyrics, it's his birthday today. And, um, you know, it's season 14. I know it's kind of late to say Happy New Year, but Happy New Year. Do you all have resolutions? Lania, do you have resolutions this year? Uh, no, I don't have a resolution. Uh -huh. um, I just want to I've just been making changes. Yeah. So of course, before, you know, before the show ended in 2023, you know, I, I disengaged with my employer. Yeah. Um, and also, um, right before the new year, I had LASIK surgery. So I got 2020 vision. What? And I can see. So these are definitely just the show moving forward. Right. Um, but I had LASIK surgery. On December twenty first, and I can see. Was it was a simple procedure, wasn't it? It's a simple procedure. Um, it's about it takes about 10, 10 15 minutes for both eyes. Mm -hmm. I was in and out, and the next day I slept after right. I got home. But the next day, I was up. I was out driving. Wow! Yeah. And I can see. I woke up. Judge Judy was on the TV. I didn't have to reach for my glasses. <laughs> you know. So I'm just. I'm making changes. I don't want to because sometimes we get caught up in oh my my New Year's resolution. So yeah. whatever I say, I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I um quick before I get to you, Chief gave fun fact. When when I was in college, I worked at a call center, and one of um the accounts I worked on, we um set up consultations for people to do laser eye surgery um consultation oh, anyway wow. and i knew even then so that was years ago it was easy i can imagine now how technology has improved mm -hmm. and do you do uh resolutions i do but they normally come way before new year's my my birthday is normally the the uh benchmark for me and um one of my things is i'm doing more traveling while well, i'm getting back to traveling mm -hmm. and um i'm currently on tour I'm 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 home for a little bit. Okay. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. I'm currently <laughs> on tour. I, I didn't have an opportunity to see Steven when I was in I Atlanta. No, I know. We were texting too. We were texting. Yeah. Yeah. We, listen, there's always tomorrow. Absolutely. Okay. You and, know what that uh, means for me, Steven. He on tour. I'm on I'm on auntie duty. All <laughs> That's what that means. Yes, Lania Love is my babysitter. Oh. Yes. Um <laughs> But yeah, I'm just I'm I'm do, I'm doing more to um satisfy my spirit. That's awesome. I usually do goals for the year. So what I'll do is I write out my goals, usually like the 30th or the 31st before the new year, and I kind of pray over them, but also review the goals that I wrote uh, the year, you know, or for that year prior. So mm -hmm. I make and I kind of and it's not always I want to get it done in that year, but maybe something I want to work on in that year. And then um one thing I'm trying to be more intentional of this year is reviewing those goals, not just the beginning of the year, but review it throughout the year to make sure I'm still, you know, um, maintaining them. So, but whatever works for you, definitely do it. Life is short. Live it to the fullest. And uh, congratulations, Lina. You can see 2020. <laughs> well, like I told you, it is dry January and this is a mocktail because I'm. it's been hard now, but um, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Well, listen, our question of the day is, have you ever been fired from a job? Chica. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
I had to clean out my desk and put my stuff in my box and carry my box on the train home and everything. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a part of life. Yeah. You haven't you haven't worked at a place if you haven't been fired. You know what <laughs> I mean? How do you appreciate a job if you haven't been fired? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. What about you, Lanier? Well, damn, I ain't never been fired. <laughs> I, I, the account, I didn't accept the position. They were, I had seniority. And it was like, well, you can take the layoff or you can take this position, which is a further commute. I was like, I'm taking the, I'm taking the layoff because mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Outside of that, it's either, you know, like a layoff or um, or I resign. Mm -hmm. So I've never been yeah, I haven't been fired. I haven't been laid off. I got laid off one time. Um, they the job the company had been acquired, and they started doing major layoffs from all levels. And um, I got laid off. It was two weeks before Christmas, but I actually got a job the next week to start in January. So it kind of worked out. But but yeah, that was it was scary. But I'm right? sorry, I'm I'm here to push back. Layoff is a firing. I mean, you haven't been fired. It's not that kind of a firing, but they're saying goodbye to you. We make soft arrangements for you, but you have to leave. Well, they gave me some money, so yeah, they gave me I mean, money. That's, that's the way it's supposed to. You get money when you get fired too. Not always. I always did. <laughs> well tweet us well go on x and tweet us and let us know have you uh ever been fired from a job all right hot topic so ron DeSantis is officially out of the presidential race he's not expecting he's not expecting exactly going out uh on a limb to with his endorsement now the florida governor posted a four-minute video on x telling his supporters he suspended his campaign this is just two days before the new hampshire primary and ultimately he's putting his support behind the former president donald trump the RD report uh, started his clip by repeating many conservative stances on issues, more border security, social decay in cities, indoctrination of children by woke ideology, and basically bowler plate message. DeSantis said that his team prayed after the loss of the I in Iowa, where Trump crushed him at the voting booth, but more than double Ron's vote count. And his team ultimately realized that there's no nothing that he can do to uh, win the race. So for his endorsement, the 45-year-old acknowledges disagreed with DT on policy in the past, but he's putting that aside for the good of the party, basically saying that four more years of Joe Biden in the White House is unacceptable. Hitching uh, your wagon to the front runner ain't nothing that is new in politics. Um, it's part of the game. And RD stayed away from roasting Trump during his run up to the primaries, until, unlike Nikki Haley, uh, the last major opposition to Donald. Now, speaking of New Hampshire, it's not surprisingly that she's getting, she's not getting Ron support, so he's not endorsing Nikki Hill, of course. Um, not only did she finish third in Iowa and fall behind Trump in the polls, but they faced off in a Republican debate and it got a little nasty. Ron said Nikki's only in it for her financial backers and Nikki said that Ron was a liar. So it got kind of intense. Um, with another... Candidate down in the polls, swung wildly by Trump's favor. You got to wonder how much longer until the primaries simply become formalities. So um, over the weekend, like I said, Ron DeSantis, he did um, step. He suspended, suspended his campaign, endorsed Donald Trump, and so did Tim Scott. Tim Scott. Now he's he's um, a senator in the same state as Nikki Haley. She actually um, appointed him as the senator in South Carolina, um, but he went with Donald Trump. Um, and even went out on the road with them. And so Nikki Haley, they're saying it's kind of a sexist kind of thing. But um, just about Nikki Haley, she she has a hard time when it comes to race relations, speaking on race and speaking on slavery and things like that. I was watching a town hall she did. Well, the town hall, yeah, town hall she did. And they asked her because she had said that, um, uh, she said that with this uh, America was never a racist country. It never was a racist country. And they asked her about it. And she spoke in circles where she's in the past. She's written about even in her book about the racism she experienced as a child. Her parents experienced racism as being, um, you know, foreign um, immigrants to this country. So but in my opinion, she's a better um, choice than Donald Trump. Uh, Lenny, I'm going to start with you. What are your thoughts on Ron DeSantis backing out of the race? A lot of people thought he was going to be the 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 um, 
nicer version of Trump uh, for Republican Party, but he never could beat Donald and now he's gone. What are your thoughts? There is no nicer option. Thank you. <laughs> They're all sinister. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Ramisha DeSantis definitely <laughs> um, is the reason why Florida you know, is just destroyed. Well, um, and I was just, I wanted to make sure before I made this particular comment, because I wanted to know how long someone could be governor for. So this would be, I don't, well, tech, not for, not that I'm talking about how many times, because this is, this is, he was the governor before this last cycle. He has when, two more years. So, but technically, so the next run for governor is saying that they have to at least wait one election cycle before they can go out again to mm. vote for governor. Um, they, there's no term, but they yeah. gotta wait one election cycle. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know what Florida is going to do, but um, they thought he was the golden boy and the way that he has completely just done so much harm yep. in Florida, you can't disregard that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as Mushmouth, I mean Tim Scott, <laughs> um, he makes my butt itch, and I and I heard that he also proposed to his 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 partner hey, girlfriend while he's been on this whole thing that he's endorsing Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, and as uh, he's just a non-factor. But as for um, Numra, I mean um, Nikki Haley. All right. I'm saying about Thundercats. I'm so sorry because that's what her real name is close to. Yeah. Um, you know, I really don't. The way that she tap danced around, um, you can never not say America has never not been racist. Right. It's built on racism. Yep. Systematic, all kinds of racism. Like yes. That's what it's built on. So to say those things, it's 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 not because you're a woman, honey. It's because you're saying dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though grabbing by the stuffs might not care about you, but yep. that's what she said. And she, they said that people that are uh, know her well say that she's a very smart woman and she knows exactly what she's saying. She's not. She doesn't feel comfortable having this culture war. She doesn't feel comfortable even talking negatively about Donald Trump. The what she's the only thing negative thing she's saying about Donald Trump is that he's too old and we don't want to see two eighty year olds running running for president. And there's a cognitive decline. That's the only thing she's saying. She's not saying anything about um, you know what he's done in the past. She's saying she's saying that he was the right president for the time when he was president, but now it's time for a younger um, generation. But she, but she, she's playing this fine line, and there's literally a video of her flip flopping and on her stance. She goes with the wind. But um, Chica, what are your thoughts on all of this? Um. So I think that. The high heel wearing governor <laughs> probably got a phone call mm -hmm. to tell him back that ass up. Right. And he said, Yes, master. Mm -hmm. And as far as the flunky that Tim Scott do, that's what he is. He's a little flunky. He's running around basically begging for a seat in office. If you happen to not get convicted and get in, can you please give me right. something? I'll Pretty do whatever you want and need me to because I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. that's him yeah right exactly miss love exactly mm -hmm. right uh, and as far as nikki haley is concerned i get sick of these people that use the fact that they're mixed race or ethnic and i'm not saying that she's not but she acts like she's not right you can't wear it it's not like tied with bleach alternative you can't use it when you want to and then take it away when you don't Either mm -hmm. you are or you aren't. Right. And you're from South Carolina. Come on, lady. You know what racism is. And don't try to twist it around and say that you were a victim of it because if you really were, it would be in your heart. You would under really, really understand it. Mm. People that have been victims of racism, they act a certain type of way. Like, you understand what a thing is. Call a thing a thing. And keep in mind, she um, was the governor of South Carolina where they had that uh, shooting at that church 
And exactly. as a result of that, she had to take down the Confederate flag because she didn't want to take it down at first. Exactly. She took it down as a result of that shooting at that, I think, Emanuel uh, Church where all the Black petitioners, those Black petitioners were uh, murdered. So how are you going to say this wasn't a racist country? You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Um, and they said it's one thing if you say, you know, it was a racist country, but we've come a long way. Even mm -hmm. though there's work to be done, she could have said that. But to say this never was a racist country. And what she said at the uh, town hall, I don't believe the forefathers, their intent was for it to be a racist country. Their intent was for white men, period. What, what did the Constitution say? Was. And if it wasn't racism, why you change your name? Him Thank you. And Ron mm -hmm. Why y'all change your name? Because y'all wanted to assimilate. Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing. People want to assimilate when they come from other cultures, yep. the only reason most Black folks can't do it is because of our skin tone. Exactly. But that assimilation is serious when you got that skin tone mm -hmm. and you're able to, you're able to, you know, pass. Yep. So you don't even use, I don't want to go look up that child's real name. I couldn't I pronounce her name, her parent, her mama, her daddy name, nothing. Couldn't mm -hmm. don't even know what it said. Yep. Consider myself racist. Yeah. You know, part of me, I, I I do think she's a better choice than Trump, but part of me hopes that Trump gets it so he can lose the Biden. Anyway. I know. I, I'm telling you, know, let's, let's, let's just say it. Are, is America really ready for a female president? I think they are. You know, we're the only country, well, not the only, but one of the main uh, countries that haven't had a female um, leader. I don't think, I honestly don't think that we are. Especially when I, honestly don't, I don't think that we're that mature. There, you're, you're still involved in women's reproductive rights. Yeah. I don't see that either. But I will say this, I know that she's not running because I know she wants governor. But I would love Stacey Abrams. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know I would love her because mm -hmm. she's always been grassroots with everything that she does, yeah. she touches everything. Um, she's the only female that I can think of right now. Yeah. Um, that I would love in that position. I I might have to think about whoever else, but you know, I hope runs in 2028, Gavin Newsom. I posted it on my Instagram. He said, he said this, and this is um stayed true. He said he was debating Ron DeSantis. He said, one thing we have in common. Neither one of us gonna win the uh, nomination for our party <laughs> in this election <laughs> cycle. And I don't that, even think he wants it. Like I, I think, I think he, he does, but I think he he's waiting his he's waiting his turn. I think, so. I think he's waiting his turn. I, I don't think they're ready for him either. Yeah, I don't think they're ready for him. Either. He's too progressive. Like he's too. I I think I think if Biden wins this go around, Gavin Newsom is going to have a space. Mm -hmm. in his cabinet and he's going to have the access to be groomed right for the next i agree because the thing about the democrats they're not good at toting what they've accomplished a lot of people think they haven't accomplished anything in these three years they have but they're not good at toting mm -hmm. it and so that was part of the reason why gavin newsom um debated ron DeSantis because he said i'm here to say what the biden harris um mm -hmm. administration has done Mm -hmm. All right, well, switching gears. So Dave Chappelle is letting his thoughts known on Cat Williams' viral comments um, be known. The Shade Room recently reported that Williams sat down with Shannon Sharp for a discussion that went live earlier this month. Uh, during the conversation, Williams took shots at the careers of various celebrities and his fellow comedians. According to Variety, Chappelle shared his thoughts on Williams while performing at uh, Mondaray's. Fellow comedian DeRay Harris hosted the event at the Hollywood Improv last Friday. The outlet reports that Chappelle's set usually has a strict no phone policy. However, footage has since surfaced on X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, and it, in an initial clip, Chappelle reacts to Williams ethering Cedric the Entertainer. He said, I love everybody, but I, but I love Cat Williams more than a lot of people. But that end is wild. All right, all right. I'm at war with the Illuminati too, but what part of the war is ethering Cedric the Entertainer? Cedric, that dude, he's old, he's fat. Leave that in alone. Steve Harvey doesn't even do this anymore. Now, during the set, Chappelle called out DeRay for saying that Cat Williams, what he did was good for comedy. DeRay defended his stance by explaining that Williams shined a lot, a lot of light 
on Comedy World where things started to get boring. However, Chappelle disagreed. He said, "Why, uh, you know why I disagree? It's because I put a special out that same day. Now, the pair began to joke that Chappelle put out an album while Williams put out a mixtape. Um, as Chappelle said, continue, he pointed out more things about Williams' viral statements. He said he only ethered ends. He didn't say anything about any of these white boys. None of these white boys function like that. And Kat is one of the best painters in the game. So why is he drawing an ugly picture of us? Stop. Uh, he explained that hurt people hurt people. However, he's a hurt person who has never hurt people. He said, it, and he does this all the time. F this one, F that one. He said, impersonating Williams' voice. But he didn't do anything wrong. Cat didn't do anything wrong. Now, the comedian um, seemed to imply that Cat didn't uh, talk about much besides what, I'm sorry, Cat didn't talk about much besides what people allegedly did to him. He had that he's been through a lot in his life and things would break people's heart, but he never, ever told anybody. This is the Chappelle saying what he's been through. He said, this ends the arbit arbiter of truth. Listen, I F of cat hard, but what part of the game Fs up another end's paper? What part of the game is about telling on another end? I just, I don't disagree with cat. He's telling some real S. Yes, it's the truth. But why would he say that? Because all of us are just trying to be in a better situation. Now, as you remember, Cat Williams uh, had a viral interview with Shannon Sharp that went live on January 3rd. Since then, he's gone over 53 million views. During the appearance, Williams accused Cedric the Entertainer of stealing a joke of his and used it on Kings of Comedy tour back in the 90s. Additionally, he addressed fellow comedians Ricky Smiley, Earthquake, and Faison Love. Furthermore, Williams also accused Kevin Hart of being an industry plant, took shots at Tiffany Haddish's career, and accused Steve Harvey of stealing the concept of his 90s sitcom show, amid accusing Ludacris of being an Illuminati. Uh, between all of that, Williams also called out fellow black male comedians for wearing dresses on the big screen. <laughs> Lots of impact. So um, what it sounds like, Chike, is that Dave Chappelle agrees with a lot that he said, but he feels like he's tarnishing black comedians by going public with it. Um, and it's hurting their bread and he didn't go after any of the white counterparts. What are your thoughts on this? On all of it? So I believe that multiple things can be true at the same time. Um, by saying that, um, Dave Chappelle has a point, but you know, if that's where that man's focus was and that's who he wanted to talk about, um, that's that man's business. That's what he wanted to do. That, I mean, who can argue why his motives, he, he did it, why he did it because he wanted to do it. <laughs> However, um, I have never, I've seen Cat Williams a few times. I have never seen in Cat Williams in any other arena other than a stadium. Mm -hmm. With that being said, how many of us can get you the power to be in a stadium? So to a degree, he's going to be beholden to how he's going to make his money because he's on tour right now. Yeah, he's on tour with uh, uh, Kevin Hart's ex-wife. <laughs> How about that for irony? I mean, she's a comedian. <laughs> they said she's a comedian. She said that she she helped Kevin Hart with most of his stuff um, early mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know who. If if this was orchestrated, right? Just think about if it was orchestrated. This is the best PR that he could possibly ever have to kick off him on this tour. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it alone. Go ahead, Lania. <laughs> yeah, well, Lania, um, he's going on tour with, or he's on tour with Kevin Hart's ex-wife. Um, Ricky Small is going on tour. He was brought in this conversation. There are a lot of other comedians that are brought in this conversation are going out on tour. So he may have, like DeRay said, made comedy funny again or brought shine a light on comedy. What are your thoughts? Um. I don't think that that man don't do nothing 
everything he does is strategic. Yeah. And if you really listen to that interview, the people that he mentioned, he only mentioned the people that kept his name in their mouth and his mm -hmm. kept his name in their mouth. Those are the people that he mentioned. He ain't talking about, and then he bigged up people. DL, be, DL has been with um Steve Harvey and said he bigged up DL, mm -hmm. bigged up Mark Curry. You know what I mean? Like, so it wasn't like it was just he was just trying to tear. I don't think he was trying to tear anybody down. To TK's point, if it was okay for other people to come on Shannon Sharp show and 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 speak whatever their they feel like their truth is, why would it be an issue when Cat Williams does it? Mm -hmm. Like that, it didn't make sense. So Cat's on tour one. He's shooting a Netflix special in May. Yeah. Now let's let's let's. Let's look at this. When that um that episode dropped, Kevin Hart dropped the movie. Um, Steve, something was going on with Steve Harvey. Like people were like dropped, or was something that was announced around the same time. The funny thing to me during that time were the comedians who was like, "Well, damn, I wish she said my name." Right. Marlon Wayans. <laughs> like, I wish she said oh, my name. Mike Epps. Mike, Mike Epps thought about the hit show. He said, I was just hating because he didn't say my name. <laughs> so, like, in, in that, and he wasn't, he wasn't disrespectful. He wasn't mad. Like, I, I enjoyed that conversation. It was a lot to unpack. Like, the first 20 minutes was just grenades. Just grenades. And it took me a minute to even watch the whole. I didn't watch it like all in one setting. I had right. to break it up because that was a lot of information. It was a lot. Yeah. But he was very uh calculated in how he spoke. You know what I mean? And with what he said. Mm -hmm. So you know, you take it for whatever you take it for. I don't think it was meant for people to choose a side. I'm just coming on here to give you my my version of my truth. Yeah. It, it just so. And, and, and here's something to think about. If battles are good for hip hop, why can't they be good in comedy? Mm. Mm -hmm. Exact, exact. And let's not, because I think somebody mentioned like like what you just said, Stephen, in regards to him, no, David Chappelle saying the black on black. See, we're not focused on the white comedians because that's not. That they're wasn't not, his, that's not his world. They're not, they're not a part of our like we might we mm -hmm. might chuckle at some, but they're not a part of our world. They're not our focus. But white females comedians be going through it with the white dudes. Mm -hmm. Like just based off of what I've seen from some white female comedians, yeah. they go through it with the white men. So mm -hmm. it's not that they don't go through nothing. We're not concerned with them. Mm -hmm. They're not a part of all. They're not a part of our culture. The closest one that's a part of our culture is Gary um Owens. Yeah, Gary Owens. Yeah, he's he's really the only one that's you know like that I can think of off the top of my head. That's right. Mm -hmm. And he loves our culture. He like, loves our culture, and he's assembly to. And he spoke out against Steve Harvey after this interview. He talked about, and he talked about that. Like yeah. everybody that talked about Cat Williams said, "Yo, Cat gave me money I didn't expect." Yeah, Cat hooked, Cat helped me out and didn't ask for it back. Yeah, like everybody that that came out after that, Cat and he never asked me for nothing. He mm -hmm. he helped me out at a time when I needed it. He didn't even know. Yeah, and he paid for Melba Moore, friend 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 of the show. Oh, he paid for her um star in the Hall of Fame, and don't even know her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, um, you know, the um, iconic model, Beverly Johnson, it's the 50-year anniversary of her 1974 Vogue cover. And um, she's speaking about, uh, uh, um, she's been doing a lot of interviews, obviously, to promote this. And she's talking about a five-star hotel who drained his swimming in pool, pool because she was Black swimming it. So um, she's 71 now, and she was talking to Page Six. She was talking about how she had a lot of... Um, a lot of shoots and she was a lot of times the only black woman there and so she did one at a five-star hotel she won't give the name because she want to get sued but she said that um they were all in the pool and they had everyone all the models and they had everyone get out and they drained the pool she didn't realize it until because she said she had put it back for mine until 2014 she went to um elaine ford's um 
she went she went to her 90th birthday party. So this is actually two years before that. She died in 92, but at 90, her birthday party. And one of the models said to her, do you remember that time they drained the pool? And they said, it, this was in the late 80s. Um, and they said they did it because you were black. And she said they did. And she didn't realize at the time, but apparently she spoke about this in uh, July of 2020 in an interview with People Magazine, where she talked about racism um, when she was 67, racism in, um, in the modeling industry. And so um, in her piece, she said that she grew up in Buffalo, New York, and recalled the first time she had ever experienced racism. She said she was about 12 or 13 years old, riding her bike in a white neighborhood where kids were throwing bottles at her yelling the N-word. Uh, she said racism would continue into her pioneer model career and know that even 46 years later, there's still much that hasn't changed and needs to be changed and addressed in the fashion world. Um, she said, I, again, I was always the only black girl on every shoot. Um, and she talked about the five star hotel. Um, but she said that she had put blocked it out of her mind in order to survive and uh, make herself not react like Teflon. So. I mean, you know, we hear about a lot of our icons um, in different industries, and it's always harder when you're the only one or you're the first. Um, Wania, what are your thoughts on this story? Sometimes I think some people think that they're immune. Mm -hmm. And because they're in a certain position, it's not going to happen. And I guess what concerns me is that you wait until you get of a certain um, status, if at all, to even say anything. Um, because at that time, whatever was important to you, you were okay with taking that disrespect just so you can get wherever you, you know, whatever worked for her at that time, you know, that's, that's what worked for her. But you know, it's there. And it's a lot of us who especially, you know, the fair skin or like like I said, if you're in a certain position, ah, it wouldn't happen to me. They wouldn't treat me like that. Like, no, I don't I don't see that happening. <laughs> no. Uh, until it happens. So God bless. Yeah. Chica, what are your thoughts on uh this revelation? I mean, when you're one of the few, I, I, I can see it happen. It's, a, it's an old story, sad mm -hmm. but true. Mm -hmm. um, when, when I think about her, I think about how her career flourished. And there was uh, another woman who was out around the same time who didn't get as much, well, didn't get the same shine, but she was picked up by a particular designer, and that's how she became famous. Luna? Uh, huh? Luna? No, I'm talking about Grace Jones. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And because of her look, she was picked up by a specific designer. And that's how she became famous mm -hmm. because someone, you know, took them under her wing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Beverly was a gun for hire. She was going around, excuse me, Miss Johnson was a gun for hire. And she was, you know, everywhere. Yeah. And I believe because Miss Jones has already been very vocal about which she's faced. And it, I believe that hers may have been a little bit more harsh because she didn't even get to make the jobs. Yeah. She was denied before she even got them. Mm -hmm. um, and Miss Johnson was able to walk through certain doors and she received a different kind of racism after she was on the job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it runs in levels, you know, yeah. as they say, it's levels to this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's sad, but you know, it, it's our history. And I think that the more we talk about it, the more we need to speak to the younger people, because I don't think that a lot of the younger people are any, are even in touch with that. Exactly. I think that they are so entitled, they think that it's a right and they, they need, it is a right and you need to have it, but they take it for granted. What, what the people before them went through. And yeah. so then when you have politicians like Nikki Haley saying this was never a racist country and we hear stories like this, you know, it, it's a slap in the face. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back with more hot topics. Let's talk about Alec Baldwin, Baldwin. He's being charged again for that um, that sh shooting at the um, that movie set of Rust. 
And then um, Jenny May, uh, she is asking them to hold off on the prenuptial agreement with Jeezy. And then there's a big, huge um, historical event that happened at um, Spelman here in Atlanta. Keep it locked. We'll be right back after this.